Hello, this is Kyoko, I am Mr. K. Uh, today, we are doing Evan Williams, Bottled and Bond, Under Proof. Do you know what that means? Oh, I do, uh, it's, it's right on the bottle, it says, Bottled and Bond means four years old, at least. Uh, it's a spef specification of, of, um, you know, they can't say that otherwise. It's one of those whiskey stipulations. Now, the important part here is that this guy has been around for a while. He's been doing it since, what was it? 1783 off of the Ohio River. Also stuff you can read on the bottle. Uh, but I have been eyeballing this kind of bourbon for quite a while. And it was only today when I walked past it once again and I was like, wait a minute. I've tried the Evan Williams. I haven't had the Evan Williams Bottle and Bond, and that's 100 proof, and I like higher proofs. So at $15 for this, why not? So that is how this started. Now, most importantly, you'll note the cap. You can't see if it's a cork, because it isn't a cork. It's a screw top, which is a whiskey sin uh, to some. I, I don't really care. It's, it's easier to... Uh, to open and close, but it does take away that um, lovely noise, which is so popular. The glug is real though. Ooh. Precious droplets, why? Don't worry, it's only a few. Yeah. Well, as usual, my tasting and uh, nosing review is going to be top notch. It smells like a bourbon. <laughs> this is why I'm not technically a review channel. It's very sweet smelling, as mo many bourbons are, and it you know it has the the basics right there, just the that kind of I guess it's brown sugar. I don't like to use so such specifics when I say sweet because everyone's palate is so tremendously different that it really does. Uh, depend on your own personal tastes and past experience to to pick out a smell. That's the crazy thing about whiskey, is just being able to uh, not only experience it, but experience it because of your past experiences. I've always thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, overall, I'm not getting anything crazy, which is, you know, what I expect from a $15 bourbon. If you've had a bourbon before, it smells like a bourbon. It's the best kind of nosing notes I can give, but it does have a very, not a clawing sweetness, but it's it's notable. You know, it's the first thing, it's like, wow, this is going to be sweet in all likelihood. It does have the barrel smell of um, the oak kind of tannin-y thing. But very faint, I would say. It's, it's not something that's like, oh gosh, it's oaky. It's, it's there, but it's not crazy. It's mostly just very, I guess, candied is one of the words they use a lot. So, on to the taste. Oh yeah, the oak shows up on the taste and the tannins and the... I think this thing that happens with wine is... Um, what do they usually call it? Dry? Yeah. If you've ever had a dry wine, everything just kind of everything on your tongue just got sucked away because of that uh, time spent in the oak. I think. I believe it has something to do with the tannins and the wood and the you know the way whiskey is made, but I don't know. I'm guessing, but there are a lot of bourbons that I've found where that is kind of the first initial hit. It's, it's, it's wet, hits your tongue, and then it does that kind of dry. Um, a dry wine kind of thing. And that might just be the alcohol. I don't know. But on that first sip, it was actually perfect. Like, it was not abrasive. It was easy for me to drink since I drink higher proofs to begin with, so it wasn't, um, you know, I haven't really, I've never tried a 60 proof or 60%. Hang on, I always get confused. Yeah, so it would be 120 proof, 60%. The reason I like percentage is better, smaller numbers. Easier to remember for me. But at 60%, that would be crazy. 
50% is kind of my ballpark. Um, that's where I like my whiskey to be in general, usually cast strength or bottle and bond, whatever. But um, for this, there's nothing that really jumps out at me with the smell, so let's keep going with the taste. Yeah, the burn is there, the higher proof is there, but as far as the flavors go, it's the same as the what I said with the smell, it's, it's bourbon. If you ever want to have basic bourbon, this is it, <laughs> I guarantee, it, this is the is a baseline bourbon taste for anyone, um, and that's pretty neat actually, because with um, different brands like uh, Jack Daniels Jim Beam, they have very distinct flavorings or distinct, there's something about them. Like if I say to someone who has drank a Jack Daniels or Jim Beam semi-regularly or has tried it more than once, they will in their own mind have an idea of what that is. It'll be, oh yeah, Jack Daniels, it tastes like this, smells like this. Jim Beam, tastes like this, smells like this. Um, I have my own, you know, recollections, but I'm not going to say them because I'm not reviewing that right now. I'm reviewing this one, and I gotta say, this is probably going to be on, in my collection here, from now on, because I did enjoy the Evan Williams when I did try it, and I don't even remember when the heck that was, but it was mildly disappointing because it felt like there could be more to it, and I was hoping that bumping up the proof would do it, because I remember, if he, I think it was thin, it was very watery. So this one doesn't have that problem, and I think part of that is due to the higher proof and, and that doing something to the consistency of it. So it doesn't taste like it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't taste like water. That makes sense. It doesn't have the same consistency as if I were drinking water. It, it has a little more um, texture, I guess is the best way. Mouth feel is the word that is often used, but um, that. This is good. This is good to me. This is the, this has the check mark in, in my uh, little whiskey world. Do I like it? Yes or no? I like it. Uh, I will have this on hand from now on. It will probably go in my whiskey tastings from now on, especially for those getting introduced into bourbon. This would be the perfect start um, after the initial bourbon. So I'd give them the 40% one that I thought was safe and then I would bump up to this one next and then I'd probably do two more um, depending maybe not as high proof or maybe leave that one till last it kinda honestly it depends on the person that's the one thing about tasting I've learned is that you can make a tasting for anyone but it's easier to make it a smaller group of people so a couple or four people at most do a tasting for that that many people and you will be able to play off their own taste profiles. If you have too many people, it's going to be really hard. And it's also better to do them in stages. So lower proof to higher proof and um, less aggressive peated stuff at the start and more aggressive crazy peated stuff at the end if you want them to have that experience. Don't don't put out, don't put Lafroy Gerard back at the start. They won't be happy or one or two might. Again, you have to understand what their taste profile is. I've actually been trying to work on a, um, a good profiling thing for my own uses. I'm sure they're out there already, and I haven't narrowed down to one that I like, or two that I like, or more, to compact it down into something I can use in my own um, wheelings and dealings, we'll say, when I do personalized tastings for people. So, yeah, happy with this one. Uh, still very tired. Uh, the weekend was, you know, draining. And I didn't do much of anything yesterday other than work on audio work. There's a new book coming out. I'll probably do a special review slash book release when that happens. It's very good. Um, and I will talk more on that in the review. Uh, it's about baseball, if anyone digs baseball. I don't even like sports, and I found it very interesting. Um, so, until next time, slow shot.
gonna put a little ice in this. Yeah. It is midnight. 